I'm Judy Shaw for NYC Floor Talk. Joining me today is Justin Hotard. He is EVP High Performance Computing and AI at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Justin, it's wonderful to see you. Thanks for joining me on Floor Talk today. So great to be with you today, Judy. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So now, Justin, tell me, how do businesses get the most out of AI without having to sacrifice privacy and control? Well, that's a great question, Judy. I think there's there's really two areas today in AI that we think are great opportunities for business. The first is, is what I would say is the more uh, consumer-driven AI. And we're seeing AI be embedded into all kinds of applications and services. Many of the cloud services that we use as, as companies, you know, certainly that are CIOs and, and, um, and chief data officers uh, integrate and, and, and deploy for, for applications. We see that as, a, as one big advantage, just ride the wave of, of what uh, many of your, your large SaaS and, and application providers are deploying. The other one, which is really more where the Packard Enterprise is focused, is around using your data to build proprietary applications and services that give you an, app, an advantage. And that, that uh, tends to be very vertically oriented, but it's also the opportunity to to leverage your own data in unique ways. And that's part of why we announced what we did uh, a few weeks ago with HPE GreenLake for large language models. All right, and why did HPE build an AI cloud and why would businesses use it over traditional cloud infrastructures already on the market? So the reason we built an AI cloud is because we wanted to offer a place where companies could bring their proprietary data and use it for their own applications. Let me give you a couple of tangible examples. Uh, one example that uh, we're actually using internally at, at uh, HPE right now is a, a help desk application. So taking all of our uh, internal data about our products and services, taking all of our customer records and customer history, and integrating that into a proprietary help desk experience. So when one of our customers has a question about one of our products or services and they call us, our, our support uh, support uh, representatives can actually take a call and actually have all the information, put it right into a chat bot and get the right answer for that customer recognizing their product, their services and everything else. That's one example. There's many others like automated form processing, contract searches. There's many things you can automate, but the key thing is keeping your data private, not sharing it with, uh, with the public world. And that, and the core tenant of what we announced is, the ability to use large language models for these proprietary use cases, these internal use cases for companies. All right, and Justin, tell me, how can businesses manage power-hungry AI systems while companies are facing increasing pressure to meet sustainability goals? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, ultimately, we all recognize that AI is going to be an incremental compute demand, and and so it's it's on top of what we already do today, um, and so for. Uh, for all of us that have imperatives around complying with uh, with the sustainability goals and becoming carbon neutral by 2050 in scope one, two, and three emissions, you know we've recognized that our services have to adapt. And so when we announced HP GreenLake for large language models, the first of our AI cloud services, we did it with the principle that every single one of these these services will be carbon neutral. And that's you know we think that's the right way to approach this. Everything we do incrementally in terms of compute demand for AI has to be carbon neutral. Now, our goal, our hope is that some of these services could even be carbon negative because of the way we design these systems. But at a minimum, we want it to be carbon neutral. All right. And finally, Justin, HP has built the fastest and most powerful supercomputer in the world. So tell me, what does this mean for businesses and humanity as a whole? Well, I think two things. I think, first of all, these supercomputers fundamentally accelerate scientific and technological innovation. You know, one of the great examples during the, the pandemic, the COVID pandemic was our supercomputers were used to help identify the spike protein and accelerate the production of, uh, of vaccines, as well as also help us project and, and plan and optimize um, some of the guidelines around social distancing and, and um, and the isolation requirements that you saw the CDC and other government agencies project uh, and, and uh, provide to the public. So these, these supercomputers do really provide tools and, and a way to predict the future that we can't get from other systems. We're seeing that uh, that same thing play out, play out even with um, a system like Frontier, the, the first exascale system and the world's fastest supercomputer. We're not only are we seeing research institutes on it, uh, we're also seeing commercial customers come and use these systems 
to provide new uh, new ways to optimize and accelerate their own product development. And some of these areas are in areas like renewable energy, wind farms, uh, areas like uh, carbon sequestration, which is very important to a carbon neutral future, um, as well as just uh, simply optimizing and improving designs for next generation aircraft, which of course will also be uh, more efficient. So we think there's many great applications for supercomputers and many of these things foundationally link right back to making the world a better place. And it fits with Hewlett Packard Enterprise's purpose to advance the way people live and work. All right. Well, Justin, wonderful to talk with you. Thanks for joining me on Floor Talk today. So great to be with you, Judy, and I uh, look forward to talking again soon.